In this edition of the Parliament Report, PAJ and MAJ speak out against proposal to criminalize cyber defamation and contingent talks between multilaterals delay IMF accord. Justice Minister Senator Mark Golding tabled in the Senate the long-awaited bill to repeal the Defamation Act and the Libel and Slander Act. The proposed statute was introduced in the Upper House on March 23. The Memorandum of Objects and Reasons of the bill says the proposed legislation seeks to amend the defamation law to address the inadequacies of the present libel law. This will be done by implementing recommendations made in the report of the Joint Select Committee of Parliament on the reform of Jamaica's defamation laws. A critical component of the bill is the abolition of the law relating to criminal libel. It also seeks to replace the defense of justification with the defense of truth. The defense of innocent dissem dissemination has also been introduced in the proposed new law. Meanwhile, the Press Association of Jamaica and the Media Association of Jamaica have sent a single but strong message to parliamentarians reviewing the cybercrime law. They want members of a joint select committee now deliberating on the Cybercrime Act to reject proposals to include criminal defamation in the amended law. In earlier submissions to the committee, the Jamaica Constabulary Force and the Office of the Director of Public Prosecutions argued that cyber defamation should be criminalized in the proposed new statute. Cyber defamation is committed on the internet through website, blogs, Twitter, Facebook, emails, chat rooms, instant messaging, and other forms of social media. PAJ Representative Dion Jackson Miller told members of the committee that recommendations to criminalize cyber defamation was inconsistent with efforts to reform the country's defamation laws and would go against international trend. She argued that criminalizing cyber defamation was detrimental to freedom of expression, noting that freedom of the press was a component of this constitutional right. According to Jackson Miller, the courts can and have showed that they are capable of dealing with cyber defamation in the context of civil law. MAJ executive member Sheena Stubbs Gibson echoed similar points made by the PAJ. She, however, emphasized that it would be draconian and imprudent to introduce criminal remedies for expressing oneself on the Internet at a time when there was a united effort to remove criminal penalties for defamation in all other forms of media. Finance Minister Dr. Peter Phillips says Jamaica has not yet submitted its program to the Board of the International Monetary Fund for consideration because of contingent talks between the multilateral org three multilateral organizations. The three are the IMF, the Inter-American Development Bank, and the World Bank. Phillips told his parliamentary colleagues on March 20 that the talks had a direct relationship to the government's liability management program. He said liability management program involves buying back high coupon debt and possibly retiring the debt and the reissuing of lower interest debt. The finance minister made it clear, however, that a debt exchange on external debt is not being contemplated at this time. The minister was responding to questions from opposition spokesman and finance Audley Shaw. Phillips said the talks between the IMF and other multilaterals have a direct relationship to the question of a liability management program on the external portion of the debt. Jamaica and the IMF in February reached a staff-level agreement on the key elements of an economic program that can be supported by a 48-month arrangement under the extended funds facility in the amount of U.S. $750 million. And the government has signaled that the criteria for persons to be guarantors for students accessing financing from the Students' Loan Bureau, the SLB, will shortly be reviewed. Finance Minister Dr. Peter Phillips said the guarantee system in its present form is deficient. He was making his contribution to a debate on a resolution for a government guarantee of a loan of U.S. $20 million from the Caribbean Development Bank, the CDB. Applicants to the SLB must have a minimum of two guarantors who are obligated to repay the loan in the event that the borrower fails to do so. The SLB requires that guarantors know the applicant and plan to maintain some measure of contact in the future. This has been another edition of the Parliament Report. Join us next time when we provide the latest on parliamentary sittings in Gordon House. Until then, I'm Edmund Campbell saying, walk good. Music